Today we're walking through how to do your very own DIY accent wall in your home or business, depending on where you want to do it, using Wise Owl Paints One Hour Ceramic. And what I did is I decided to do a base coat of Snow Owl. That way the lines that you see me starting to tape off when they get peeled off will be that beautiful pure white color. So the bordering in and around all the geometric shapes will be that snow owl color. Now I started taping all the stuff off. You can see it's just that simple. Just start taping. And I actually have a diagram or design that I have that I'm going by. You see me kind of looking down for, but we had a little technical difficulty and you'll see what I mean here in a second, which didn't allow me to record the whole process but I explain a little bit here in a second. Well, so much for that. My iPad died, but you can kind of see exactly what I did. I finished taping off from the design, which I'll have up here in the video for you guys to see. I mean, it's a pretty simple process. Just tape off your lines. You want to pull the tape as tight as possible to keep the lines as straight as possible. You could use a level or something like that, a red line pointer thing, whatever you want to, if you feel like that's something you need to do, but I didn't think it needed to be that specific. The lines are going to be this snow owl, because there's a snow owl underneath once I pull them off. So I wasn't really too concerned. I could touch it up or do whatever as I need to, but sorry about that. The video kind of messed up. My iPad decided it didn't want to record anymore. So I swapped you out for my phone now. So we're going to continue on with just basically time-lapse and or a video with voiceover to show you exactly what I'm doing. But for the next step was to tape, put little tape spots into all the shapes that were done. That way I knew that I didn't need to add any more lines. And then it also serves as a good paint by numbers sticker. So we're gonna pick of the eight colors we're gonna use, we're gonna pick a number for each, write the number in, and then just go square by square, by the number that we're doing. So that'll be the next step. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna do some paint by numbers action. I have my diagram on my iPad and I'm just kind of going through and starting with one and working my, through, my way through to eight, making sure I get each and every one number exactly to the color. Now, this was a huge part, I'll, I'll be honest with you, like you think it's kind of silly, but having those numbers and just having little sticky tapes in there to ensure you had everything exactly how you want it to takes it right back to those first days when you had your paint by number coloring books and it just again talking through this being a diy and sharing just how easy it can be you make it as easy as you make it so if you decide you know to try to just wing it and obviously you could miss you could paint the wrong thing there's all kinds of problems you could come across so just take it from me go ahead and stick a little piece of tape in there a to mark that that shape has been created and is good to go and then use that same tape to number it off now this is what we have we have all the little tools that i needed and boom here we go here's my numbering process i just numbered one through eight labeled it and there's my design I did and actually did in Photoshop and that's a whole nother little bit but really gave me a good setup so I have these 3 8 inch nap rollers and their own little trays for all the colors except for the last two and we'll get to that here in a little bit too so you can see all nice and taped off all has their own little numbers and it's not that hard I mean, literally, I just took the tape. I didn't have another person help me. Took the tape, pulled it as tight as possible. And as you can see, when you have the shapes, you know, whether that line was straight all the way across or not really doesn't matter because you can see these shapes that we have in here. Once it's starting to be painted, it the lines are, are shorter. It's not gonna, it's just not gonna matter. But anyways, so we're starting off with Inkwell. And as you'll see, this color palette is kind of a cool mid-century modern style color palette as we go through with some blues, some blue-greens, and then we got into some lighter blue-greens, orange, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. 
But for now, Wise Owl has this amazing one hour ceramic paint. It's 100% acrylic, it's a matte sheen, um, it's scrubbable, it's super stain resistant. It's all these amazing things. To me, really, the biggest one is that it's that matte finish and it just turns out beautiful in the end. And also, this is actually in my workshop space where I teach classes here in Clearwater. And I had people just walk up and touch it because it had leaves this really beautiful, besides matte sheen, soft sheen, which is not something you usually get from a matte finish paint. And next up we have Abyss. There it is. There's my little logo. Abyss. So this is uh, probably our most sold paint color out of all of our paint lines that we have. It's a blue greenish color. And here's my kind of design too. I really just took this thing into Photoshop and created layers and that allowed me to eye drop the different colors. And I'm telling you, it took probably an hour and a half, two hours to figure out exactly where to put the colors that I felt like made the most sense. And I think that was the trickiest part of this whole process. The actual painting part is easy, but the designing of you know, getting your geometric shapes to balance out and the color palette that you're using is probably the trickiest part. So any way you can get it into, you know, some type of software or PowerPoint, anything where you can move the shapes around is great. So Labyrinth is a new color for us at Wise Owl and it is specific to our one hour ceramic. Really beautiful. Oh yeah, see me? I'm, I had to actually take and use just like a shop towel down the line of the crack against the wall there because I didn't have enough of my micro angle brushes here that day. But that's a little tip, a little trick I guess, is if you have like little you know edging areas that you need to get to when you're rolling some paint on a wall you can really just get it on this stuff covers amazingly well as you can see so just that little bit of you know shop towel rubbing it down the edge covered now we are going to do two coats to this bad boy just to ensure we get complete coverage but one was a lot well, now we have lux Lux is another one of those deep blue with a hint, gentle hint <laughs> of gray to it. Uh, another really cool special color. And again, we're sticking with the, the darker to start. So I went dark kind of to light and then added some other color ranges to it. But this was a very contrasty color palette as you went through. And then of course, one hour ceramic is self priming. So the biggest thing with that is that your walls are clean. Um, it's also a low odor, so lower VOC paint. So one of the biggest things for me is the safety of all the Wise Out products and what it's been able to do for me, painting inside and the wall paint is no different. It's definitely extremely low VOC and you're not gonna have those headaches that you would get from some other paints. Now this is Eon. This is another, it's tricky, tricky color. It's a green with a little bit of gray. It's gonna dry a little lighter as you see it'll start to go. But just another pretty color. And this is where you start to see me pull in more of the greens and go that direction for the next couple of colors. Oh yeah, Saran Wrap. I have lots of Saran Wrap. I wrapped up each one of the rollers and like a big dummy, I only had one actual roller. Oh, here we go, Boca Grand. This is a much, much lighter color. It's like a white, light green color. So, you know, just getting towards that lighter color within this range that I had. And again, surface preparation, you know, if, if you're doing anything that's not clean or a wall uh, you want to use some primer but as long as you have a, a wall that is not flaking or falling apart this wall actually was pretty old so i did that wiping it down pretty good but uh, the paint that was there prior to me painting the snow wall base was good enough 
that I was able to not have to worry about priming. You should not have to prime unless you're painting something that's really bad. Now we get into different colors. We're in a blush and it's exactly that. It's a skin tone pink kind of color. And you see I've transitioned into a foam roller. Um, honestly, it was just simply because I ran out of the, my other rollers. This is another method you could use, especially if you're using a, or if you're doing this kind of thing on a, a smaller scale, like the smaller parts just happens to be the blush. So I saved the foam rollers for those sections. So it's another just little tip, little trick you can use. Ultimately, the paint is pretty self-leveling. So regardless of what kind of brush you're gonna use, it's gonna level out pretty well for you. And last but not least, Moroccan Sunset. Now this one really gave it some pop of vibrant color to totally contrast everything else I've done, which really added to the overall look. So application, as I mentioned, three inch nap woven roller is what you can use for most indications of, or applications you're gonna do on you know, bigger walls. So if you're just gonna paint your entire wall, that's the way you'd go. I went with, I think those are four inch rollers. Again, just because I was doing smaller sections for this accent wall, but you can use just your normal roller if you're rolling it on as a full coverage. But the, the small ones were perfect, although I only had one roller for the first round, which I would recommend having a roller for each. They're fairly cheap to go by. That way you don't have to swap out the roller cover, which you can see all along the tops of those wrapped in plastic wrap. And then of course I missed a spot. So I had to go back and hit up that spot to knock it out real quick. All right, finished second coat of all the paint colors and the proof is in the pudding. We're gonna pull off the tape. We're gonna see how this is gonna work. I'm gonna put you back in fast forward again and do the voiceover, but it's all done. It's still drying. So I'm a little nervous to pull the tape off, how that's gonna work. I'm probably gonna do some touch up because this wall is old and bumpy and all that kind of stuff. So there probably will be a little bit of bleed through here and there, but that's why I did the base coat Snow Owl so I know what color to touch up if I need to. And I'm gonna have some nice, beautiful white lines, hopefully. So fingers crossed, here we go. All right, so this was my first time ever doing this and I did record it and walk through you know the whole process because i wanted to share you know how it went and for me pulling the tape was pretty nerve-wracking i'm not gonna lie because you weren't sure you know did everything hold did everything do what's supposed to and it did check it out it's looking really good oh by the way clean them if you're wondering water base um soapy water be good to go and coverage is crazy so i kept peeling tape and again, I was nervous because this is an older building, older walls, and we did have a couple spots that peeled up. Now, it didn't peel up the paint that I used, it peeled up the paint from underneath. And there's really no way to tell. If you're in a, a space like this is actually a store that's had the wall painted time and time and time again, you have no way of knowing what's underneath. So you have to go into it knowing if you're in one of those situations, if you're doing this in your house or in your, you know, workspace area that you might have touch up. So touch up is probably something that will happen. And I'll have a little video in here to share a little bit more about how I did the touch up here shortly. But ultimately I'm just peeling tape. It's showing that beautiful snow wall lines from below. Um, just taking your time, I think is the biggest thing. Uh, depending on what kind of tape you use. I use this blue shop tape. I've used frog tape before and it sticks so much that when you have layers of paint on a wall, as an example, that you don't know what's going on below because it wasn't yours beforehand, um, it sticks so much that it will, sometimes will peel the paint right off the wall, whatever paint that was there prior to you starting to do your thing. All right, so after all the tape's gone, this is what you get, y'all beautiful white lines from pulling the tape off and then this was my setup on the table i wanted to show one last quick view of that i didn't end up get a, getting 
rollers for each color instead of having to swap out the roller cover on one roller that was a little silly i don't know why i did that and then trays for each and it just makes it go by quick the rollers are pretty cheap so i would highly recommend you get rollers and roller covers for each color and this is the final result one hour ceramic matte finish beautiful colors saturation matte finish durable scrubble all the amazing things you can get with Bizal, and you can do a wall like this too hopefully this video was helpful hopefully it shows you just how easy it can be to make your own accent wall in your home today if you enjoyed the video please hit like subscribe and of course if you want to find any of these amazing products links are in the description of the video down below have a blessed day and happy painting